Now, all honeys are created equal while they're in the comb. That's their creation. But once they are sold as honey, they've had intervention by people processing the honey. And um, they may also have had um, contamination during the production if the hives have been in areas where the bees can be collecting nectar um, that's got contaminated with farm chemicals, um, herbicides or insecticides. And these are not the sort of thing that you want in direct contact with the exposed tissues of the body uh, in a wound. And you also don't want the sort of contaminants that can end up in honey from the processing. Now, there are available medical-grade Minoka honeys, and these are produced from hives in areas where there's no risk of contamination of the nectar source. And then right from the handling of the combs in the hives, they are treated as a medical product. So you don't get any contamination of the honey in the processing. And they're also put through state-of-the-art filtration to remove the as much as possible of the pollen from the honey so that you don't get problems from the pollen particles um, getting into the cells of the healing wound. Now, for the honeys that are used in wound dressings and are used by medical professionals, the honey is sterilised. Uh, it's sterilised by the method that's used for pretty well all uh, surgical dressings, wound, wound dressings, which is gamma radiation. And our research has shown that this doesn't inactivate the properties of the honey which you need for the uh, wound healing. Not all honeys are the same, so uh, there's people often ask, why um, pick on Manuka honey? What's special about that? Well, its antibacterial properties are quite different from those of other honeys. Uh, all honeys are created equal uh, in that the bees add to the nectar an enzyme that generates hydrogen peroxide, which is what gives antibacterial activity to all honey. But the body has, in all of its cells, and in the blood, and in the serum, an enzyme to break down hydrogen peroxide because it's a harmful substance. So what happens if you put a honey which in the laboratory you can measure as having a high level of antibacterial activity, uh, if that's due to hydrogen peroxide, when it gets in contact with the body tissues and with serum or blood, that loses a very large part of its antibacterial activity. Now, in Manuka honey, the antibacterial activity is not due to hydrogen peroxide. Uh, it's due to methyl glyoxal, which forms in the honey from something which is in the nectar from the Manuka tree. And there are other components in the honey which work with that methyl glyoxal to make it twice as potent as an antibacterial agent. And that together will work in the presence of the enzyme that's in the body tissues just as effectively as it does in the laboratory. It keeps its full potency of action. Another feature of Manoka honey, which we have found in recent research, is that in general it has a much more potent anti-inflammatory activity than other types of honey do. Now, there is variation within different batches of Manoka honey, but overall it is a lot better than other types of honey for this very important action. The anti-inflammatory action is a very important feature of achieving successful wound healing.